Hello everyone, this is just a video documenting um, a recent purchase that I made. Um, here's the box from the Sudogaya English website. Um, notably, this is not their Japanese language site. This is a separate um, English site hosted for, I suppose, the um, international market. And so I didn't have to go through any courier or anything such as this. Um, instead, I purely uh, could just order directly on the website using a credit card that I just had available. Um, so note, as I mentioned before, no need to use a courier. And here is the box. Um, you can see that I've already um, taken off all personal identifying information. So that explains why the surface is a little bit wrecked here. Um, and before I open it, I just wanted to uh, give some details in case you were um, interested in possibly ordering from the Sudogaya English website as well. Um, so I placed this order uh, on the 22nd of September. Um, I received a confirmation of that order the day after, the next business day, or uh, you know during the daytime in Japan, where they um, let me know that in an automated email uh, that was machine translated that um, they were looking for the stock and would prepare the shipment um, to make sure they have everything available. And then about five days later, uh, on the 28th of September, they shipped it out. And then uh, the package eventually arrived from overseas, going through customs and everything, on the 6th of October. So overall, it was about a two-week turnaround time. Um, had some minor shipping issues, but that was mostly my fault. So, But everything was sorted out. And one of the reasons why I uh, went ahead and made this purchase was because, um, as you might be aware, as of the making of this video, the... Uh, yen is relatively weak right now when compared to the US dollar, so um, a lot of the items in this uh, purchase uh, were much cheaper than if I were to try to source them from, let's say, eBay uh, from a domestic um, seller, for instance. Um, so that was partially my reasoning, and let's see uh, what I eventually get. So I'm just going to take this off the camera and open it, um, or do my best job in attempting this. Please bear with me. So one thing, oh, while I'm opening this, I, I'll just talk. One thing that I was a bit wary of is that when I was reading past um, reviews and past uh, experiences of other people, um, is that sometimes uh, Sudogaya um, doesn't have you know what you want or what you ordered uh, available, um, and then, or w which is why they sh send out an uh, email talking about that. And instead of, you know, instead of telling you about it and asking if you want to continue with the order, they just kind of go ahead and ship you the order itself. Um, so I was a little bit concerned about that because, you know, the value of the shipping, like this was EMS shipping, um, so it was, you know, somewhat costly. Uh, the value that you get um, lowers if you ship fewer items, right? Uh, and it influences how much how good of a deal you get. Um, so I just really wanted to make sure that I got everything in my shipment um, because yeah, otherwise, you know, the prices start to add up. If you're spending, I think I paid $45 for shipping a total for this large box. You can see I've opened it now. Here's the inside, something that looks like this. I mean, it's just an empty box, but it's you can get a feel for the depth. You can fit quite a few stuff or things in here, and it was just one flat rate. Uh, for the items that I bought in a box such as this. So I bought four games total, but I tried it out. The shipping price was the same for at least these four items. Uh, there's more um, information uh, in here, so let me just cover it up, and I will show you what it looks like. This is sort of what they attach it to. It's this free, I guess, piece of cardboard with the games attached to it. Um, and I suppose the reason for this is just to protect them. So, yeah, uh, that's what it looks like. Um, let's look at the other side, I suppose. You can see here, yep, it's just like a slab of cardboard that's shrink-wrapped in order to hold the games on the back end of here. Okay, and now let's open it up. Um, they said there's some personal identifying information, so I had to cover it up. Um, but you get the idea. Maybe, let me take it out here and you can kind of see. Maybe it's a little bit of a hint as to um, what I got. Oh, they taped it. Okay, that's a little annoying, but... Hmm. Well, I 
think we'll have to can that idea just because I have to carefully remove some of the tape off of this case without it. Ah, okay, well, I got it. So I'm gonna put that away. And so here is what I got, or this is what it looked like. You know, I kind of ripped the plastic here to get rid of the uh, information. Um, let's see. Yep, that is indeed the case. I don't think anything's here. And we'll just get to the first couple games that I got. So the first one is the GG Alest collection. You'll see a theme here with this stuff that I get um, from this point forward, but this was GG Alest collection for the PS4. This was um, one of the most recent M2 Shot Trigger ports, although I think it is not the most recent because they started to release some of the Toeplon games. Um, Tiger Heli, um, and I believe Fire Shark, if I'm correct. Um, but yeah, so this was actually quite a bit cheaper to import, um, if you count shipping and everything, than if you were to try to download it. I believe it's about 50 bucks uh, that you have to go through the Japanese uh, PlayStation Network, or I think it's also on the Switch, actually, uh, so, or the uh, Japanese um, eShop for Nintendo eShop. Um, but I was able to get this uh, for about $34 with you when you factor in the conversion rate, which was quite good. Of course, it's used. Um, but yeah, you got the insert and the disc here, which is pretty nice. Let's just see what the disc looks like. Yeah, I would say that's pretty good. Um, honestly, barely played. Uh, oh, and there's a reversible cover. I didn't even realize that. That's awesome. Well, very cool here. And so, yeah, I was interested in giving these games a shot. Um, but, you know, given the fact that it costs $50 to download, I would much rather take advantage of the current exchange rate to, um, you know, not only acquire it physically, but also have the opportunity to play it. And so, yeah, I mean, it just is a typical PS4 Blu-ray case. Nothing too magical there. Uh, there's a little bit of sticker residue on the bottom here, but that's okay. I can always remove that and then a sticker... Um, let's see if I didn't dox myself. No, it's just a description of the item. So, yeah, here we go. The first game. This is a collection of the three uh, GGLS games, I believe. Um, I could be wrong. Including one that was made specifically for this release. So that's really cool. And I've always wanted to give it a shot. So that's the first game. Put that away. Okay. Here is... The second game that I got, and this is probably the most expensive one of a lot. This is Espluda for the PS2. You can see that I have this, uh, there is this used price sticker here. So I believe they pulled this off of a shelf um, and it got purchased. So yeah, it was definitely the highest ticket item. I mean, you know, when the exchange rate was about 100 Japanese yen to a dollar, it would have been about 82 bucks. But uh, I was able to get it for under 65, I believe. Um, not including shipping. So with shipping, it was a little bit more. Um, but to be honest, this game is, you know, this is one of my favorite cave games. I think I have a 1cc of it on my channel, um, played through MAME. And I've always heard that the um, arrange mode that's exclusive to the PS2 version was really fun. Um, especially since it has um, two of the s characters that you can play as, which just sounds awesome to me. Um, However, you know, I wanted to be able to give this a shot, um, and I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to emulate it or if I just wanted to pick it up and give it a try on my uh, my um, soft modded PS2. So I'll rip the image from the disc and I'll uh, and I'll copy it to my hard drive and be able to play it that way. Um, but let's take it out of the plastic, and you know, this is. Like, I was a bit surprised by how much this cost, or how much this was initially. I was looking for it on eBay for a while, and I saw that it was mostly floating around the $100 asking range. Of course, I'm, I don't think this is something that's sold very often, just because it, you know, it's a Japanese import of a relatively obscure bullet hell game, although it's by one of the most famous developers of those uh, the genre. It's still not exactly what I would call popular. Um, so I just saw a bunch of people asking about a hundred US dollars for it, but through, you know, going through Sudagaya, it actually seemed, or it was actually a much better deal. So, uh, assuming everything works. So let's just take a look inside. 
Uh-huh. Okay, well, we got two discs. Wow. Okay, so we have the Superplay DVD. I didn't even know it came with this, actually. That's amazing. Um, and the manual. Wow, this is this is quite nice. Okay, so we got the Superplay DVD with um, those butterfly wings, very very uh, characteristic of Escaluda and the ESP games in general. Uh, here's the game disc. Looks beautiful. Um, let's take a look at this just to see. Oop, I'm having a little bit of trouble. What the disc looks like. Very nice. Wow. Hardly a scratch, honestly. I don't know how well you can see that. I might have um, shown myself off in the reflection. That's how pretty the disc is. Um, and the Superplay DVD, I'm sure it's fine, but we'll take a quick look. Make sure not to uh, show myself. Yep. It's nice. Yeah, I probably never used, to be honest with you. Um, and yeah, this is awesome. So it's complete, I believe, or at least it's ca game case manual um, and the um, Superplay DVD. And here's just a very small instruction booklet. Full color. Okay, we got Ageha and Tateha and uh, Ciceri, main characters of the game. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, and we got, see, it's showing off the range mode. Oh, and we got this the telephone cards or the mail-in cards. Wow. And, oh my goodness, this is awesome. It has all the inserts. This is a, what is this? This is, oh my goodness. Is this Pro Gear? Is this? Wow, this is an advertisement for the cell phone versions of Caves games. This is Pro Gear. Look at that flip phone. That's amazing. Oh, and we have the other versions too. Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Unfortunately, I can't read Japanese, but I know that this looks like Esperade. I mean, that's definitely Esperade. Sorry, I can't really get it to focus. I'm guessing they had a mobile phone port, too? And you can tell me what the others are. I'm sure Ketsui and DOJ is on here as well. Um, but yeah, and here's the telephone card. Or sorry, I don't, I don't actually know what this is called, but it's one of those things you mail back in. Registration card, maybe. Um, so yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so I'm going to put that very carefully. Back into the manual. And there it is again. Put that back inside the case. Close the case and put that away. Definitely the first thing I'd be going into my PS2 after I make this video. Okay, um, so let's move on to the next game on the list. This is something that you might recognize, um, and it was definitely the cheapest thing on this purchase. Uh, this is Mushi Futari for the Xbox 360. You know, you know it, you love it. Big juicy cancels. This is the um, famous game behind a lot of um, I, behind a lot of uh, fan appreciation for Cave, and something that sort of transcended. Um, the arcade, you know, the humble and niche arcade upbringings to like, um, be, I wouldn't say a household name, but if you've heard of shmups or bullet hells, this is usually the first name that comes up. Um, if you're not already deep into the genre. So yeah, here's a sticker. I'm going to remove that after the video, but we have some nice back art. It's covering both Rico and Aki or sorry, not Aki, Rico and, um, Palm, you know, Aki always kind of reminds me of Palm, or vice versa, but, you know, I digress. Really like this game as well. Um, I don't have a 360, um, but I was able to 1cc this game through Xenia, which played the game quite stably. And actually, the Xenia uh, emulation has lower input lag, at least from what I could tell, than um, even main. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned... Uh, emulating it is a perfectly good way of playing this game, and now I have the actual disc, so let's just open that up. All right, so here is the 360 disc. Not as pretty looking as the PS2 discs. You can kind of see uh, how far we've fallen over time, but let's just take a look at the underside. See what I got. Looks fine. Hope I didn't... Um show anything off there in the reflection, but what can you do? Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. It's just palm. I wish it was full color, but maybe a different release or maybe the initial release. I think this game was released several times actually for the 360 over its lifespan. And it also has a platinum hits version. 
Um, but you know, this is the one I got and it wasn't, it, w it was definitely the cheapest item on this list. It's still relatively affordable. Um, I think it was under $40, uh, without shipping. Um, so let's just say that 40, 40 bucks approximately for shipping for four games, about 10 bucks per game. Um, if we can think about it that way. Um, okay. So we just got nice art, we got Rico and Palm. We got Larsa, I believe is her name. Um, you know, just some demonstrations. I do enjoy um, these manuals, so I'm glad that it came with it. So currently we're all complete uh, as far as I'm aware, or sorry, I shouldn't say, say complete, I should say game case manual and some inserts. This is a DLC card, I believe. I, I wonder what DLC this was for. Um, version 1.01, .01. you can go to the URL and do all this stuff. Sign to Xbox Live. I don't think there's actually a code on here, so I'm probably fine with showing it. But yeah, cool. We got a DLC card attached to it as well. So I'm just going to put that back. And yeah, as I said, I mean, I was able to 1cc this game uh, on Xenia just fine. Excellent game. At least in the uh, at least in the 1.5 version, I believe, uh, Rico is actually quite harder to play than Palm. At least because Palm Abnormal is quite strong. Um, so, yeah, but you can hear me talk all about that later. So, that, yeah, that's third game on the list. Oh, sorry, I forgot to show the spine art, which I just saw. Looks pretty nice. What is this? This is version 1.5 uh, right here. Version 1.5. So, yeah, this is... I'm not sure if the original, like, only 1.0 released on the 360 and they had a re-release with 1.5. But 1.5 is the game that I uh, prefer, I believe, or the mode that I prefer. Um, okay, so we're going to the last thing on this list, and this was the second most expensive, but definitely not the cheapest, I would say, especially for these old video games. Um, so it's uh, Dodonpachi DOJ, um, white label only, um, of course, since this is the PS2 port. Case is a little bit dirty. Um, but that's okay. We can always find another case for it or clean it off. No problem. Um, here we go. Here's the spine. Dodonpachi Diojo. That's what DOJ stands for. This is, you know, if you haven't watched the Electric Underground's video on this port, um, from what he claims and for, you know, I believe him from what I learned from that video, it's an amazing port, um, that includes, Lots of different accessibility features. It has different training modes, a no bullet mode. It has a replay takeover system, which I've only really heard about in the realm of fighting games and only in a few fighting games, in particular, uh, Plus R, Guilty Gear, Accent Core, Plus R. Um, I didn't even say the full name there. Um, but yeah, that sounds awesome. And I mean, it was played or it was designed in part by, or sorry, it was, there were consultants, um, roped in that were super players to help make this game um, the best it could be. Um, so, okay, we're opening it up here, and we got, okay, another super play DVD, I believe. Um, at least that's what I assume it is. A little bit dirty here, um, a little bit dusty, but that's okay. Seems like this was a well-loved, um, well-loved game for good reason. And here is, uh, okay, so this is the super play DVD. It's in the back. And we have the game disc in the front. Yeah, it says PlayStation 2 right here. Very brown. <laughs> um, you know, kind of interesting. Not an elaborate design, but that's okay. Cleaning off a little bit of dust there. So go ahead and check the disc. Scratcher 2. Yeah, this one's definitely not as nice. Um, but that's okay. Um, I should really be careful about... Um, handling these and sh having this reflect in various places, but you know, um, yeah. Okay. This one's also nice. So I'm just going to move the Super Play DVD to the front like so, and then I'm going to uh, move the game disc over to the back, just because I believe the back is a bit more stable. Um, but anyway, yeah. Here's what it is, and let's get, just take a look at the manual for fun. 
It's uh, published by the same company, Arika, I believe. Um, you can see it down here and said so the manuals are a bit of similar sized. Ah, this looks like, ah, okay. Well, we're have to, going to have to do some unfolding. <laughs> Interesting, okay, so it's one of those pamphlet type um, manuals that I never am able to reassemble. Um, but you know, here's what it kind of looks like. I'm looking at it upside down. Okay, so how do you read this page? Pages three, four, five, six. Um, and there's page one on the back here. Page two. Here are some instructions for how to play the game. Let me just. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and here's just a, a full um, poster, I guess, when you um, <laughs> when you uh, unfold it completely. I was not expecting this picture. Please don't uh, age restrict me. I, not that that matters anyway, but <laughs> I was also not expecting this racy image. Um, I don't know, this might be an iconic key art or something, but I'm not too familiar with EOJ. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I haven't um, mentioned yet. I have not played this game extensively. Probably just had a couple brushes with it here and there. But given how highly praised this port is, despite missing a black label, um, I figured that having a bunch of history and a bunch of good training features on top of it being just a legendary game, uh, one loved by many a uh, Japanese salary man across Japan. Um, yeah, I wanted to uh, acquire this and also um, give it an honest try. So if anything, it's just a really cool piece of Porting history and a good example of what a shmup, um, you know, what a shmup should be coming from the arcade to the console, um, you know, to the console space. So yeah, uh, let me just bring the games all back into the shot. So yeah, you can see that these are all very specific types of games, more or less. We have three cave titles, two of which are on the PS2, and we have an M2 shot triggers port um, of GG Aleste um, or Aleste, uh, which, you know, they all fall within the same domain of shmups and stuff. So yeah, very cool. Um, I'm glad everything came complete. Uh, as far as I could see, I keep using that word, but everything came with most of what I expected them to come with in good condition. Um, if I could say one thing, I think DOJ is probably the most scuffed as far as you can see the a little bit of wear on the case, plastic case fading, but you know, that can all be replaced. The cases themselves, I don't think are particularly special. Oh, well, besides the fact that there's two discs, right? Okay, well, I mean, there's still a bunch of games that do this, but you know, nothing a little cleaning won't hurt um, or nothing a little cleaning can't fix. So yeah, thanks for watching and tuning in. Um, I definitely, after this experience, I can very, um, I can very uh, confidently recommend um, Sudagaya, at least based on this experience that I've had with um, ordering from the company. You know, a two-week turnaround time locating these really old games um, is quite good. Um, the shipping was good, but I'm on the West Coast, so that may depend on your own situation and location. Um, and, you know, if I might comment on, I guess, the browsing experience, a lot of people, at least in the online reviews, had a bunch of issues with that. I totally understand. A lot of it's machine translated. Um, I think I was trying to look up uh, Donanpachi SDOJ, um, and, you know, it was translated as the biggest Ojo, right? So, you know, things like that might make searching things up difficult. Um, and I've also heard that the stock is relatively limited, at least when you compare the Japanese site with the English site. People say that there's actually a lot more things on the um, Japanese site than on the English site. But from, you know, I was able to find what I was looking for on the English site. And not only that, but they were also able to find it and get me everything that I ordered. Which, as I mentioned before, is not always the case uh, for ordering from them. I've definitely heard stories of people... Um, being shipped their package, finding that there are things missing, and then they go back and look at their bank statement and see, well, they didn't charge me for that last item, so it's okay, right? And so, well, it's like, yeah, I guess so. But as I mentioned before, it kind of uh, it kind of 
does not sweeten the deal, or it does the opposite of that um, when you factor in shipping into the overall cost of the item. Um, as I mentioned here before, 40 bucks EMS shipping got you, you know, four games. You could easily fit more in this big ass package, right? I mean, even with this slab of cardboard, you could, you could shrink wrap more games to this thing so you can make your deal even better especially if you're dealing in U.S. currency. So with that being said, yeah, thanks for going on this journey with me. Uh, I did not know what I was going to get, so I really appreciate, um, you know, you taking the time. All right, thanks.